And now we're back in the QuickBooks for Landlords course for QuickBooks Online. And now we're going to prepare the account for landlords. And this means setting it up specifically to manage rental property units. If you have any questions about this topic, you can leave them in the comments section below and I'll do my best to help you. And of course, if you feel the video helped you, I hope you will click like and don't forget to subscribe to get updates on new videos that come out all the time. Now you may well ask, what do we need to do in QuickBooks Online to prepare the account to be specific for landlords and managing rental property units? Well, we have to change the name in the account settings and we have to create custom reports that landlords need. So first, what account settings do we need to change in QuickBooks Online that landlords and rental property managers would need? Well, of course we have to make the company name and address the same as the real company name and address so that text prints on all the documents, reports, and forms. We also have to track expenses by tenant and expenses by apartment so we know which particular residents are costing you money and why. And of course, we have to be able to bill tenants and other residents for the expenses that they cause us to have for things that they are responsible for. So, just like we learned, we're going to click the cog wheel and then click Account Settings. Then, of course, we click the Company tab. It's really the Company tab that opens by default, and that gives you the ability to put the EIN number and name, as well as address and so forth. And, of course, in a real situation, you would fill out the information as it applies to your company. We're only going to show you how you can edit each section by clicking the pencil tool that's in each section. The pencil tool allows you to edit what's there. So we're holding the landlord, okay? And of course, if it was an EIN number, it would be a different format than Social Security. It's giving you an example of how the EIN number, the format should be. Two numbers, then a dash, and then the rest of the numbers. So two numbers, then a dash, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, save. Okay, maybe it's missing a number there. Eight, let's try it. No, still missing a number. Nine. Okay, whatever it is, you'll put it in, and that's your EIN number. And of course, you could edit the tax form that you'll eventually file, your email address, and so forth. And to track expenses by tenant and make all expenses potentially billable to the tenants, what you would do is you would click here in the tab of expenses under the account settings that we're already in. Click expenses and you can see bills and expenses has a section that's covered under this pencil tool. Click the pencil tool and check mark track expenses by customer because in our case that means tracking expenses by tenant. And of course we also want to make expenses and items billable so that if a tenant costs us money we can add it to either their rent balance or their deposit balance and track those separately. So make sure you check mark these two and then click Save. And then you can close this and we're done with account settings and now we can finish up setting up the file by putting in the reports. And you may well ask, why do we set up the reports at the beginning? Well, reports are the way that we find things in QuickBooks Online. We can customize them for rental property management and then save them in a special place that we can always go back to in two quick clicks. What reports do landlords need in QBO? Well, there's the general type of company reports that you have to look at once in a while. And then there are the tenant specific reports that you need to look at all the time to make sure you're managing your relationship with your tenants. So what are the general company reports that we have to put up? Well, 
First, we have to put up what's called the trial balance. And that's the total of each account in your chart of accounts. And we will be setting up your chart of accounts in the following video. But first, let's just put the trial balance up. Now, very often during the course, you're going to click this Reports tab in the left menu. And we will have all the special reports that we have set up special for ourselves in the Custom Report section. Right now, there are none. But in a few minutes, you'll be going back to this all the time to find what you entered, fix what you m made a mistake on, as well as judge what's going on in your company. So click Standard so that we can get the list of all the reports that we need. And to get, uh, actually, what I want to do is remove from these, uh, well, we don't have to remove them. Let's just scroll down to the section of uh, For My Accountant. For My Accountant, the most important report is this, the trial balance. So again, you click Report, click Standard, scroll down to where it says For My Accountant, and then open the last one, Trial Balance, double click. Now, of course, it's blank because we have not yet recorded any transactions. But the way we save this trial balance is to come to the top left and click the Date Pull-Down Choice menu. We want our saved and memorized trial balance to show the results of all transactions regardless of date. And then once we click Run Report, it's going to remember that we want to show that. And now that we change the report, the way we need it to look, we have to click this green button in the top, Save Customization. Now, we could name this anything we want. We should leave the name Trial Balance, but put dash all, so that it indicates to us that this trial balance is showing us the accumulated totals of all the transactions in all of the accounts in the chart of accounts, regardless of date. Click Save. And you may notice now, if you click Report and Custom Reports, our good friend, the Trial Balance, is right here up in the uh, main menu, uh, up in the menu. And if we click it, notice when it opens, it says All, so it remembers what we want. Now, the second report is the journal. The journal is your best friend in QuickBooks Online. The journal is the only report that shows every transaction in the order in which it was put into the computer or into the QuickBooks Online account, regardless of date. Click Standard, scroll down again to where it says For My Accountant, and click Journal. Now, the journal is great, but it has to be adjusted a little. So we're learning a little bit about customizing reports right at the beginning. First. The journal is of no use to you unless you click the date pull down and ask the QuickBooks Online account to give you the results of all transactions regardless of date. Then you also want to add a column to the journal that will indicate the date and time that the transaction was physically entered into QuickBooks Online. Remember, that's different than the date and time that you actually made the transaction. So we're going to click this cog, and it allows us to add columns. Now, of course, you don't see anything yet, but we should add um, where it says created so that we know the date and time it was created. And we should also click last modified so that we know the date and time it was last changed. And having these two things on a report that shows you everything you entered in the order in which you entered it is going to be helpful on so many levels. And that's why we set it up at the beginning. So we leave it like this, double check that it saved it. All we have to do is, you know, click away. And then if you click back, you see the check marks are saved. Then you click Save Customization Journal Dash All. It means it's showing us everything we need. And then we click Save. So that you can see if two clicks, if we just click Reports and Custom Reports, now we have our trial balance that shows the accumulated totals. And now we have our journal that shows everything we put in the order in which we put it. 
Now, the trial balance shows the totals of every account, but if you want to put up the general profit and loss, that's fine. Keep in mind that the profit and loss simply repeats numbers that are in the trial balance. The trial balance shows the result of every account, but the profit and loss shows only the accumulated totals of the income and expense type of accounts. So the numbers that are on the profit and loss are on the trial balance, but not all of the numbers on the trial balance will be on your general profit and loss. But people like it. It's a general assessment of the company. So we click Standard, and we go down to For Your Accountant, and see if you can find profit and loss. Click Profit and Loss. And again, you could alter the dates each time you open it, but as a general rule, it should show the accumulated totals of all transactions regardless of date. And when you click Save Customization, you can give it your own name, Profit and Loss Dash All, or whatever name you like. But if you click Save, all you have to do to find any of your reports is click Report, Custom Reports, and they're all here. Now, you may well ask, what are the tenant-specific reports that we need to manage our financial relationship with the tenants? Well, the first one we call the tenant balance detail, but it's really the customer balance detail. We can make it look like the tenant balance detail, but QuickBooks will always know it's the customer balance detail. Go ahead and click Reports, Standard, and scroll down to where it says Sales and Customers. And one of the name, one of the reports is Customer Balance Detail customer balance detail I think it's down here where it says might even be with who owes you yes it's actually in the section of who owes you and you will click customer balance detail now it already says all dates by default but I would like to change the way it looks I would like to change the title on it so that it doesn't say customer balance detail it says tenant balance detail the way to do that is to hover over it, click the pencil tool, uh, and instead of where it says customer balance detail, simply change the name to tenant balance detail. And then of course you just click the mouse away from where you were, and of course it'll save your customization. Then when you click save customization, it already knows that the title you changed is what you want the report to be named. So then when you click Save, you can see that you can click Reports, Custom, and now you have a report that shows you every transaction for each tenant one by one in date order, and it'll show you what the tenant owes. The other report is the Profit and Loss by Tenant. How do you do that? Well, again, click Reports, Standard, and you go down to, you know, look carefully. It could be in business overview, profit and loss by customer. Now, we know that our customers are tenants. So after we open it up, we're going to do two things. We're going to change it so that it shows the results of all dates. And then, of course, you could always put a custom date after you open it. But down here, where the pencil tool is, click the pencil. Change the word profit and loss by customer to profit and loss by tenant. Maybe with a nice capital T, look professional. And then, of course, to save it, all you have to do is click the mouse anywhere away. So I'm going to click away, and it saves it. And, of course, you could always click the pencil tool to change those. And now that the report looks the way we want it to look, again, we click Save Customization. And of course, it knows we want the words profit and loss by tenant because we put it in the title, so we don't have to change it again. And then we click Save, and now we know every time we click Reports and Custom Report, we have all the reports we need. And these five little reports will not only show us every single thing that we need to know financially about the details of our property rental unit business, but they will also help us find and fix any mistake for any transaction that we may enter.